Hi guys, welcome back. This is uh, part four of this uh, demo tutorial series. And uh, just as a follow up uh, from my last video, I just wanted to kind of run you guys through um, this video and how I'm actually applying the tone just once more because I think sometimes uh, if things are kind of sped up in a timeline, it's uh, maybe hard to catch. So I, out of ZBrush, I took my line art and did a BPR render, I brought that into Photoshop. And as I explained in the last video, I used action sets of my own uh, to basically run levels and you know adjust the line art uh, using tolerance, which basically kind of uh, shapes it up kind of like a, a bitmap line. It, it, it's an actual stepped line versus a uh, aliased line. And I'm just simply using the cloning tool from uh, a master copy of my own uh, tone file. And so I have created a, a basically a large template that has a bunch of screen tones in it. And in those screen tones, uh, they have different percentages and uh, line shades. So, you know, if you think of one inch, uh, all of those dots are bitmapped dots uh, in a series uh, and, and a, a maybe ranging from like, say, 37.5 lines per inch. Uh, and so forth in different scales and this is so that I can get lighter shades and darker shades but I keep the document docked over to the side I use the clone brush to basically uh, or the stamp tool as it's called in, in Photoshop to basically take a selection uh, from the layer and apply it uh, freehand to say the ship and then I've uh, run my separation uh, action set on another piece of tone which is like a, a lighter 20% gradient and I'm applying that to some of the background uh, and also some of the ground. There are certain elements in this drawing uh, probably I, I took the more simple version of the the pod the drone pod that I created in ZBrush and placed it into a frame and then started drawing around it so uh, the little guy there running his diagnostics on the ship and uh, maybe the smoke the shadows all of those were actually inked in freehand in Photoshop so uh, just to give you uh, an idea of what kind of options that you have if you were to say from Photoshop uh, keep different views or custom views uh, from the image plane menu uh, you should be able to uh, change your POV in a framing instance uh, so you know say if you were doing this for some type of storyboarding uh, venture if not comics uh, this sort of workflow could work for that and you know you could just change the angle uh, apply you know ink and or tone uh, whichever you prefer and uh, you know finish out a, a finished piece or a comp in Photoshop so there are lots of different uh, things that you can do and, and additionally on the pot itself there's line work that did not exist that I drew in and just a close-up there uh, all of the dots all of the line uh, and including some of the onomatopoeias and whatnot when they're placed uh, I save the file out as a bitmap TIFF and this basically again forces all of the gray pixels out and leaves you with a pure black and white uh, line art source. So uh, in the end if it's uh, say for example 300 dpi you can upscale that to 600 dpi and retain all of the uh, dot shades and line widths uh, pretty pretty well uh, even if it's going to be uh, down sampled down to a larger smaller print size. So it's pretty efficient and uh, all of the other smaller like onomatopoeias and whatnot those are all custom built inside of Photoshop sometimes uh, freehand and then uh, using Illustrator if you you know trace your freehand uh, image using that I believe it's called live trace in Illustrator you can take those and then you know copy and paste them directly onto your Photoshop document and so, you know, it becomes a, a mixed bag of things. So uh, one line source from ZBrush and some of it freehand and some of your freehand onomatopoeias, you know, you can clean up in Illustrator. And so files come from Illustrator and when placed as a smart object layer inside of Photoshop, um, you can always right click and edit content and fix any of the, the shaping or the placement of those files. Uh, and it, it'll directly from Photoshop open it in Illustrator so that you can adjust your vectors, which is really nice. So here I'm saving as a bitmap, 
and uh, one key note is to remember you want to select a 50% threshold and then just designate your DPI settings. So I think here I'm going to probably jump between 300 and 600 pixels per inch and then save it. And on screen, if you get any type of morays from using something like uh, screen shades or, or screen tone shades, uh, once it's bitmapped, it's probably not going to misprint. Uh, sometimes at different smaller sizes, uh, it can become dangerous of, uh, you know, jumping its uh, lines per inch shading and, you know, it cause a moray effect. So probably pretty much anything that you're going to print at size uh, at 300 dpi, you can do use dots like this or, you know, whatever your resolution is going to be. So probably if you're upscaling to 600 dpi and it's going to be about the same size or larger, that might be uh, of benefit. But it, you know, re making reductions that are too much smaller than print size, uh, it's probably best to do it at size and then make your reproduction. And then I save out with uh, pretty much no compression and uh, it, usually the data becomes lighter uh, than not. So join me next time. I'm actually going to hit up a, a concept art angle uh, on this line art sample and we're going to talk about more versatility with this image.